Hello viewers, this is Neha and I am um, from Gurukul of Civil Engineers YouTube channel. We are back with the, another interview with a very interesting personality of our infrastructural industry into civil engineering, Mr. Anuj Matre. Uh, he has 17 years of experience in this field and he is currently working as Vice President at Cube Highway and Transportation Asset Advisor. Um, hello Mr. Anuj, how are you? Hi. Hi, Nia. I'm good. How are you? I am good. So I just want to brief our viewers about your profile. It's like uh, your overall experience uh, comprises of uh, uh, infrastructure industry and you have a like, um, degree in transport planning and currently you're working uh, for urban transport and urban development uh, and it is primarily focused on private uh, partnership, public private partnerships. Right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you did your engineering from uh, KNIT and then you pursue your MS from SPA yes. and after that you have joined uh, MBA also with Leeds University. So how all yes, sir, this um, happened like from engineering to MS and then MBA? Uh, talking about uh, my journey or my background, uh, I started as a civil engineer. Uh, in fact, uh, from the very basic, uh, from a polytechnic level, I first did my diploma in civil engineering and then uh, from there moved on to doing uh, BTEC uh, from KNIT, as you just mentioned. And then I did my master's with a specialization in transportation planning from uh, School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi, uh, was, uh, in the Institute of National Importance like IITs or NITs now. Uh, so after that, during the mid stages of my career, uh, I pursued MBA from Leeds University Business School in 2011-12. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, again, if you talk specifically about civil engineering, I'm not a very practicing hardcore civil engineer. All my experience is purely in the traffic and transportation sector right. uh, for almost close to 18 years now. Right. So, um, if we talk about your uh, stream into civil engineering, uh, have you decided it to when you have given uh, your 12th or uh, you, I mean, right now you think mm -hmm. that if you have chosen a different stream, life would be a little different? Satisfying journey. Uh, as such, I don't have any issues or uh, I don't think uh, I should have done something else or you are quite satisfied with your career. Yeah, yeah that way I'm, I'm absolutely satisfied. Uh, you will always uh, have some regrets, but yes, yeah. that is again part and parcel of the life. So as such, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely okay with my career path so far. So uh, did you have your campus placement uh, in your engineering uh, or in mm, MS? Bachelor's, we didn't had any campus placement for civil engineering at that time. That time. Uh, in master's in SPA, again, uh, it was always to be a very informal kind of placement, I would say. So we used to get recommendations from our seniors or from our professors uh, who were also working with the different companies in the sector. So that way I got a very good recommendation. So yes, in a way you can say I got placed through the campus. Okay. Yes. Um, different different uh, streams in within civil engineering only. So how so, did you uh, choose uh, transport planning? For you? Transport planning, uh, fortunately, that was the time when the, this highway development program started in the country, probably first time after independence. Um, uh, till, uh, it was around late 90s when uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee became prime minister. He gave this uh, uh, project to his bureaucrats and his ministers that we want to connect uh, uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari and Saurashtra to Silchar. Then they conceived this program of Golden Quadrilateral. Uh, so that's, I think, probably just that my good fortune. I completed my course around that time when highway sector was at its uh, initial stages. Uh, in, and also in highway sector, more about this public-private partnership was mm. at its uh, nascent stage. So, uh, so that is it and uh, probably from there onwards, uh, thankfully, even the later government also um, kept on focusing on infrastructure sector and highways definitely is, a, uh, is the backbone for any infrastructure development in, 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 a, in a developing country like India. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely there are lots and lots of opportunities for uh, people like us and uh, I think after that, uh, uh, um, 
the, the demand for highway engineers or transportation professionals yeah. in country has definitely grown in leaps and bounds. So um, you started uh, your career, um, Sanoj, into consulting. Then you have yes. moved from consulting to corporate. So um, how did you find uh, a difference and how is your journey in that field? Started with a hardcore technical engineering consulting. Then I moved more on the government advisory side where you work more on the project management, project development, and sometimes also the funding aspect of the project. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I moved more onto the execution side where the companies were actually working the on-road, uh, one of my uh, initial employers, uh, Isolux Corson, who were a civil engineering contractor um, and working for highway sector. And currently also Cube Highways is a company who does more, um, nowadays in a more professional or more polished way we call it asset management uh, so uh, i think it's uh, it has been very uh, very very satisfying and uh, good from the learning point of view because in consulting we get a very very different view of how things actually move on ground mm -hmm. uh, and probably i can say that's more of a very theoretical approach because uh, my uh, objective there is to prepare a report or a design for my client. Uh, after I submit my report, my responsibility is over. And you work with the government sector or, or the authorities who are involved in these projects, uh, who are doing the project management or the, who are the owners of these projects, you get to see what are the challenges on their side. Yeah. So uh, I think that way I've completed the circle uh, and it uh, I think it's. It, uh, I think I made the right move. At least on that front, I got to see all sides of yeah. the complete project life cycle. So you have quite a good amount of experience and very interesting uh, um, phases in your career. So, if you want to guide uh, our uh, new upcoming talents into the same industry, um, are there any trainings? Are there any specific software uh, available for training part? Uh, where they can just brush up their skills, their techniques. I mean, uh, if I compare it with uh, 20 years back, when things were uh, uh, probably the job market or even the courses were not as diversified as they are today. Today, there are so many modifications or even after doing civil engineering, you can do many other things. That thing was not available when we right. completed our civil engineering. So assess your uh, options available to you these days. Uh, it's not only that you're to go into the construction only or design only. There are so many uh, uh, aspects of civil engineering. And I also understand. as a civil engineer, you have to be very, very curious mm -hmm. and uh, uh, about your surroundings. Every news, every event could be an opportunity for a civil engineer. Right. Right you have now, to keep yourself updated. This, Yes, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, when I am working for transportation sector now, I, we are operating roads. So uh, there is a file on my desktop uh, itself where I keep a track of every news which can affect my sector, and that I keep on uh, updating. Okay, today there is if there is some incident which I think would be uh, uh, could have an impact on road sector, I just make a note of the date and the event that is. For this uh, same type of question uh, uh, came into my mind is like how one should identify their key areas uh, where I should focus. Areas in terms of uh, like, uh, engineering have, areas or yeah, engineering areas like uh, you have done your engineering then you choose your uh, field as transport planning. So how should uh, how a new student should identify the field they should go how they uh, choose their field. Uh, construction is one aspect where uh, that is purely hardcore construction on site. Mm -hmm. Then the other aspect is obviously research and development uh, uh, for civil engineering, whether it can be in terms of the technology, it can be in terms of the material, it can be in terms of the, the construction technology. So th that is one area. I um, mean, nowadays, uh, obviously computers are part of our life in every possible manner. So there are so many, uh, 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 every uh, design software that uh, a student should uh, need to learn. Um, so I think uh, apart from these are the mainly two three areas where you can uh, broadly think about. Obviously, there are multiple layers within these areas. 
I mean, if you talk about construction, maybe you want to specialize in building construction, or you want to specialize in road construction, or you want to specialize in special structures, marine structure. So that is again, I think, some relate uh, goes with the student. What kind oh, of yes. areas, or what is his attitude, or his uh, uh, comfort areas where he feel he or she feels comfortable? Okay. Um, yeah. So um, you have uh, like. Um, 17 years of experience in the industry. So, uh, do you uh, feel like there is a gap between the industry's expectations and the capabilities of the student who are uh, coming into uh, this field or any other? Uh, field? Absolutely, absolutely. There is a gap. There was a gap, and there is still a gap. Okay. Uh, we are only giving very, very uh, bookish knowledge. It hasn't changed much in last 20, 25 years. At least uh, I can say from my experience. It's not all about the academics. Also, the soft skills are missing in uh, or missing or not up to the mark. I think. Uh, so apart from so, the academics, the, personality development is also. Uh, yes, the, the soft skills point I mentioned earlier yes. is very important, and that helps you. I think probably uh, more acceptable in the industry. You can be. Uh, you welcome. probably feel more more welcome. Yes, and it will help. It will help you in. Uh, acclimatizing with the professional environment. Yes. Uh, so Mr. Mathre, my next question for you is like, uh, what do you consider uh, a turning point in your uh, life uh, who has given you edges towards other people in your career? Uh, moving to uh, BTEC was definitely a changing point, especially to me more as a for my personal development. I mean, if I look at Anuj Mathre of what it was before 1998 and uh, what Anuj say after 1998, there is a sea change. Um, uh, so that definitely helped me in evolving as a person, as a professional or something which I am talking a lot about attitude. Probably I developed that yeah. thing uh, there. Uh, and uh, after that, I think definitely uh, opting for uh, transportation planning. Um, had I continued in civil engineering, probably have not have achieved what I have achieved now. Okay. Again, these are all speculations, but yes, I think uh, uh, going for these two courses uh, was definitely, uh, uh, I can say, the turning point of my career. Right. So, what are your accomplishments if we talk about your uh, entire journey, uh, your hardship, your struggles? Uh, what, what do you think are the best see, moments? You see, in, in the corporate world, there are no medals given, no awards given for your accomplishment. So it's very difficult to say, okay, these are my accomplishments or these are my achievements. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, I think uh, I mean, if, I, uh, if I look at my life of uh, 43 years, uh, starting, uh, completing all my education in a government school, it has been a satisfactory journey because at Times there, my clients has asked my seniors, okay, we want Anuj Mathre to be our project manager, uh, or we, uh, uh, my bosses or my seniors in my organization, uh, giving me assignments by ignoring some of the seniors, preferring me over <laughs> those people. Willing to medals uh, in the career. I mean, whatever you may call it, but yes, and also the respect I think I have earned. Uh, through different organizations, not only from my seniors, also from my juniors. And also, it is very important uh, uh, that people from the different functions of the organization respect you. Because in your uh, expertise or your function area, probably you are an expert. But uh, uh, if you are uh, respected across different functions, so I think that itself uh, is an achievement. I, I mean, at least uh, I think I have earned that. Yeah, no medals, no awards, no certificates. But you did great. In your, as, uh, everything in your career was going great. Um, you have worked with uh, uh, great companies in your field. So how did this MBA happen? Um, it was... Uh, probably I can say that was the only mistake I made in my career. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean... Uh, as I said, I was more of a generalist always. So um, I was uh, after working for seven, eight years on the technical aspect or uh, of the projects. So I thought, let me add uh, some more uh, skills more on. You can say when I took the decision and when I completed my course, it was uh, probably wrong timing. The When I came back to India in 2012, 
I did the course in 2011-12. Um, the economic condition wasn't very great. The job market. I only went to. Uh, uh, I mean, I never thought of leaving the infrastructure sector or my core competency of a transportation professional. But I want to supplement my skills. Mm, so that's why I went ahead with the with the MBA program. And yes, it's always good to be a student after working. Um, so, um, Mr. Anuj, I just wanted to know uh, who uh, was your uh, inspiration in your life uh, for you the way you led your life do you have any inspiration to follow somebody um no i mean i'm a firm believer in god i think there is some special power which drives all of us so that is definitely one thing uh, but yes uh, my parents who uh, my mother and father both who gave me the values and uh, the character uh, which I have developed over the years. So it yeah. was all their learning and their upbringing. So definitely I look up to them for my inspiration. Both of them were very, very hardworking person. Um, yeah, mainly, yes, they are my uh, inspiration and obviously always telling me not to do anything wrong and follow the path of uh, the dharma. So um, people who, have, who are joining uh, this industry, um can you suggest to uh, uh, like how they should uh, go ahead in their career uh, is there any substitute to hard work they how they should uh, attract the uh, peers and seniors to give them a good project good healthy promotion so is there any substitute to hard work they should... there is no substitute to hard work and uh, as i always said uh, we should keep a very very flexible attitude towards things uh, even uh, at, irrespective of your age in your career, whether you are a fresher or you are an experienced person, you should always be open to new ideas, to challenge new things, to accept new ideas. Because yes. uh, if you think that, okay, I have uh, uh, achieved certain skills, certain milestones in my career, and that is enough for the rest of the life, things are changing at a very, very rapid pace. So we should always be ready to accept a change. Uh, and I think that is one of uh, my strengths that I've always been open to changes and shift, uh, um, uh, worked across different profiles, different uh, within the industry also. I worked across different companies uh, with a completely different nature of work. Mm -hmm. So that helps in the long run. And always true to your profession, we should not uh, be uh, kind of, uh, yeah, uh, I think. Uh, we should be very, very respect our profession, yeah. and we should take pride in whatever we are doing. Yeah. So, um, you in seventeen years, you are happy uh, with the, how your career has shaped. Yes, as I said earlier, also I have no regrets as such. Absolutely not. Right. So, um, at the end, I uh, just wanted to know is like, uh, how do you spend your time other than your work and your professional life? Um, do you have any uh, hobbies? Do you pursue? Is this very important? Yes, it is very important, definitely. And uh, I think uh, you earlier asked me about uh, my turning point. So I mentioned from uh, my polytechnic to I went on to B-Tech codes. So there uh, I learned a lot on the extracurricular activities. Probably I was more involved in the extracurricular activity rather than the academics. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, so that definitely helped me as a as a person as a professional. So one must have some uh, uh, hobbies or some uh, things where he or she can spend their time uh, because it is very important to switch off from your professional life. Uh, I've seen lots of my friends, colleagues who are always engrossed in their work, um, which I don't think is a very healthy way of. Uh, working or healthy way of living uh, we should be uh, we should have uh, hobbies or whatever it could be reading singing even if someone says my hobby is sleeping let it be sleep maybe whatever extra time somebody can get uh, so to, to me i mean I'll, i always prefer outdoor sports uh, even today i whenever i get time i play cricket uh, we have a office uh, we have a team in our office so like once in two months or once in three months, we get a chance to play cricket. Apart from this, uh, uh, because this is something which uh, any sport you have to have uh, some partners or mm -hmm. some players uh, 
so over the years i developed this habit of long distance running i uh, do half marathons right so that is one thing which i have developed over the last 5 years for which i don't need any company any friend or any partner i can just move on on my own i also do lots of uh, this uh, uh, reading uh, nowadays not possible through books because of the kind of lifestyle we have but yes online mediums uh i spend a lot of time uh, not on the facebook anymore or whatsapp but yes uh, if you uh, if you are uh, intelligent enough you can get uh, lots of good material on twitter as well and obviously the blogging i also try my hand at writing blogs but uh, probably the kind of uh, work pressure or again various other things probably i'm not managing my time so well so i'm not so regular with that i've written few um and in fact a couple of them have been published on some websites also but uh, but yes you must have some uh, some outlets for your thing and because that helps you in charging yourself and uh, as i said you must know how to switch off yourself from things what happening around you for your uh, mental health also yeah and and switch off from any kind of problems yeah. whether it could be a personal problem you have to sometimes just uh, because you cannot live with those problems sometimes those right. they take their own time to uh, solve so it's good to just switch off yourself from those things not easy yes. I, i would say yeah. but yes you should learn this thing we should um many thanks mr metre it was a very uh, good interaction uh, thank you so much for sparing your time in the weekend and no no it was my pleasure as well thank you very much thank you so much um, uh, right so um guys uh, this was mr anuj matri and we have uh, got uh, a few uh, great interesting inspiration stories from him this will uh, help us in developing our uh, the, uh, personality also so stay tuned for more important people interviews uh, with our channel gurukul of civil engineers our website is gcelab.com and you will be coming back with uh, different people from the industry stay tuned take care of yourself and your loved ones bye best wishes to gurukul of civil engineering thank you so much sir